Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. Now today I would like to introduce you to a rather different game to the sort that I normally have on this channel and I'm actually going to begin by posing a quick question. When we say war game, what exactly do we mean? Most of us when we think about war games and military simulations will think of the traditional Kriegsspiel, so you've got games that focus on particular historical campaigns, um, they lovingly recreate the forces of both sides, the terrain, sometimes weather conditions, supply. Now this is very much the traditional mould of war game as an analytical tool to help people understand a battle. But there are other types of games uh, outside of this majority that play a similar role in helping us to understand war but approaching it from a very different angle. And the game I'm going to show you today is this very tiny little thing. Um, it's called The Grizzled. It's a French game. And it was bought for me for my birthday a couple of years ago by a, a truly, truly excellent, awesome friend. Um, you know who you are if you're watching this. Thank you. I still play this very often. Um, the Grizzled is a cooperative card game. Um, as you can see, the... Uh, from the box, the artwork is, is particularly um, cartoony, if I have want of a better term. And it deals with a group of six French soldiers in the First World War. Now, one wonders at first glance, what can a game like this teach us? Because if I open the box, all it comprises are some counters, including quite a few that have... Uh, coffee mugs on them, and a small deck of cards. So you've got the individual soldiers, and you have a small pile of very generic things that they might encounter on the battlefield. So there's your, there's your six fellows, and there are your cards. So you see, it's very basic. All you've got are um, trials, tribulations that will affect them. There's no historical uh, framework, no particular battles are named, no locations. It's all very, very simplistic. Um, aside from that, all you get in the tiny book uh, box is the rule book and a player aid card. Um, so what, what can something like this do? I mean, surely something this simple can only be a really, you know, it, it must be some sort of basic family game with a theme pasted on. In some respects it is. Um, the Grizzled is based on a very simple system. But there is an enormous depth going on here because it's made clear right from the start that this is not a grand sweeping game about the First World War. This is a very close view of the very tragic encounters of six friends who... According to the rule book, there's a little write up in it, are based on real life characters. And your objective in this game as players is not to win great victories, but it's to survive the war unscathed and to come home, all of you. It's a cooperative game. If any one of you fail or die, the, the team stands or falls together. It's a very difficult game to win. And it actually is incredibly poignant because. As much as one can, through such a simple system, you get the feeling of being drawn in. And I find it very poignant that in the inside of the box, and this is where the artwork for all its cartooniness is beautiful, you get the shadowy silhouettes of the six friends in the early summer of 1914, reading the notice of mobilization that is going to change their lives for the next few years. You see them there again on the back of the rule book as happy looking civilians. And then you see them there in the midst of the terrible conflict that is the First World War. And the art gets incredibly poignant in places. You, you see them looking tired. There's no glory in this game. It's all rather horrendous. Um, there's another one there, one of these chaps reading a letter from home. And of course, the one that I'm not alone in thinking this, the one that gets me every time, the rules under falling morale. 
simple, simple sketch. Tons of human misery in that. It's very powerful and very moving. So how does the game work? Well, put very simply, each player has their character in front of them. And all the information that you get on the cards is simply your name and a lucky charm that allows you to evade a particular threat that may pop up in the game. These generic hazard cards, they're called trials and they're also known as threats, um, are what the players have to face. And there's two separate piles. One pile is placed on top of this card, the peace card. If you all successfully empty the cards above this and have no threat cards left in your hands, you have survived the war together. That card, the monument card, is the one you don't want to see. The balance of the cards sit on top of this and at the end of each turn cards are transferred from this to add to the trials pile on this. So this functions both as a vehicle for prolonging the war and also ominously as a countdown. If the last card is played from the top of this, you all lose and it's assumed you did not survive the conflict. This game can play quite quickly. It's very hard to beat. So your whole sense while playing this game is that this, the, the two, three, four, five, six of you, however many players you have, are just trying to get through this horrible, horrible experience. And you can almost feel the sense of gradual demoralization, even mental breakdown, as you try and get your head around, you know, how you cope with periods of boredom, where nothing, you know, long periods where aside from small raids, you might not do very much. A raid in this game is just taking one or two hazard cards and playing them in front of you to try and get through the mission. Um, a major offensive could be represented by your team leader saying, we're going to go for it this turn. We're going to draw a hand of 10 cards if you're feeling suicidal and you somehow have to play them all. Now, a mission ends in failure if you have any three of the same symbols out in front of you in no man's land. So the more cards your team leader tells you to take into your hand at the start of a mission, the more risky a mission it is. A 10 card hand, which is I'm telling you now pretty suicidal, probably represents a frontal attack at some point during the war. That could be your Verdun. So it's pretty bad stuff. Um, this game, without doing any specifics or telling you you're in a particular battle, gives you this awful sense of helplessness and fear. And, and you get very emotionally attached to your guys. You want them to get through to the end of the war. It's a very, very powerful game. It's all the more poignant that the artwork was done by uh, Tinu, the French artist uh, who used to work for Charlie Hebdo before he was killed uh, in the terrorist attack quite a few years ago now. And you, fans of his will probably see his style written all over the game. So that is um, The Grizzled in a nutshell. I'm hoping my next video, as per the course, will be a, um, a demonstration one, but I just want to... I just want to add two quick things before I sign off. This game, tiny little thing, impressed me so much that when the company released in 2018 what they called the Armistice Edition, with a lot more goodies, I went straight for it. And this, boys and girls, is the Armistice Edition. So you get little beautifully, sensitively crafted and painted figurines to go with uh, the base game. They have added so many layers to this game. There's now a solitaire module. Um, you can now um, play specific campaigns. Some people did say they wanted particular playable campaigns. Um, everything has been jazzed up. There's a beautiful new rule book with a lot more detail, a lot more incredible artwork in here. Um, and now a, a long campaign function, so you can actually keep track of how far your men have gone through the war. 
you, you no longer have to play this game at one sitting. You can leave placeholders to show how far through the war you've gotten. So you could do a year of the war, you could do half the war, you could do the entire war. Um, all this is comes at a very slight increase in complexity, but not very much. There's the player aid card. Hardly anything. It is such a beautiful and elegant system that it copes very well with this level of upgrade. And having, having played both through now, they are absolutely incredible. I would strongly recommend, if you get this game for yourself and it's still easily obtainable, this can be obtained for less than £20 on Amazon at the moment, um, as of the publication of this video. I would recommend, if you want the, the same sort of sense of atmosphere, Try to get your hands on something like this. This is the graphic novel God Damn This War by Tardy and Verney, which I bought in 2015. And it's based on the experiences of, I believe, one of their grandfathers. And it is very powerful, very moving, does not pull any punches in the slightest. And although it's a different artist, it marries up beautifully with this. If you want immersion in the French experience of the First World War, that's something a bit different to what you're used to, I cannot recommend this, this too highly. And you just look, you get everything from the beginning, the, the, the days when Europe thought it was marching off to glory. The French in particular, they march off in their magnificent blue and red uniforms all the way through to the grey, dirty, blood-soaked horror that overtook the entire continent. It's all in this book, and while reading this, and literature like it is an ex in an experience in its own right, if you marry this with something like this, it will, at the very least, give you a very, very different perspective. Would I call the Grizzle the war game? In the traditional sense, no. But in a very important way, yes. Because in its own very special, and I'd say unequaled way, it takes you out of the operational side of the conflict, the impersonality of, you know, however many died at Verdun, what they were equipped with, um, what their logistics were like. I mean, there are excellent games that cover things like that. But something like this just takes you away from it and just gives you that purely emotional sense. Only a faint one, because we can never know truly what these poor fellows were going through. But, but this brief, very weak, but powerful connection to a terrified young Frenchman in the midst of millions of other terrified young Frenchmen going through what must have been one of the most hideous experiences uh, it, uh, that humanity has ever been through. And you find yourself rooting for your, your guy and really wanting him to come through the other side safe and sound, see his family again. I think what this game achieves is very important because those of us who like war games and play a lot of them can get swept up in the impersonality of it all. Uh, you know, when you deal with armies and corps and even regiments, the men just become numbers. And it can be a little easy to forget what we're dealing with here, although the reality is never far from anyone's mind. But something like the Grizzle takes, really takes it down to the personal level in a very simple and very effective way. And while you might think of the losses, at, I'll go back to the example of Verdun, you might look at the ossuary or the trench of the bayonets, you know, they're very powerful reminders of death and sacrifice. But they're still quite impersonal because the numbers shock us and our brains clamp down and deal with them in a, a very logical way. This achieves something more akin to the anonymous uh, dedication, which I think is bolted to what's left of Fort Vaux. And it's a simple dedication from a French mother to her lost son. And it simply reads, 
to my son. Since your eyes closed, mine have never ceased to cry. And that, that focus on the individual rather than the mass, is just as powerful and just as important. But anyway, I'll step off my soapbox there. That, in a nutshell, is the grizzled. And I hope I've given you an idea of why I find playing it such a powerful experience. Why I think it's an excellent teaching tool, because this game is accessible to very young people. You can understand picture matching. You can play this game. Um, it, it, it has so much potential. It's so beautifully crafted. It's excellently done. I can't recommend it too highly. And I will be showing you in the next video how it plays. So hopefully you can see, uh, get a taste of what the basic game is like. And um, hopefully it will pique your interest. Um, I think very highly of most of the games in my collection. I'm always happy to try and share them. So if you do get a chance to, give it a play. It's not necessarily an upbeat game, but I think you'll find the experience at least interesting, if not necessarily rewarding. Thank you.